Ready for a few stories from the master? Nice. Here are 19 reasons to read The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave Musson, at Dave Musson on Instagram, and this is the place where I'm taking you through the works of Stephen King in chronological order and giving you 19 reasons to read all of his books. We're up to 2015 now, which means there's lots of videos for you to check out. Click around the rest of my channel. There's also a bunch of specials in there as well that people seem to enjoy. Off the top of my head, why not check out my Stephen King starter kit and see what you think. And if you like those videos, and the tractors don't annoy you. No, that wasn't a tractor, I'm just saying they do usually drive past. And I don't annoy you too much, then hey, click subscribe so you don't miss any in the future. There's still plenty more coming up and plenty more to go, definitely. So in this video, as I said, we're in 2015 and we're covering The Bazaar of Bad Dreams, which is another short story collection by King. Now, as is the way with the short story collections on this channel, I'm going to break up the 19 reasons a little bit. I'm going to give you nine reasons to read this one, and then I'm going to count down my personal 10 favourite stories from this collection. And this entire video will be spoiler free, so you can watch it all the way through to the end, okay? So, nine reasons to read what is, at the time of recording, King's most recent collection of short stories, and my top ten from within. Let's go. So this one sort of came out of nowhere. It was announced in 2014 and came out the following year. But hey, we know King, right? He's always writing short stories. There's always, surely, another collection on the horizon. In fact, it's been seven years since this one now. I reckon we might get another one pretty soon. This is his sixth collection of short stories and contains 20 pieces within there. Plenty of interesting stuff and I'll dip into more of it as we go into this video. But basically, there is a lot to get your teeth into. So the reaction to this was slightly strange and mixed. Critics basically didn't like it. And yet, it won some pretty legit awards. It won the Shirley Jackson 2015 award for best collection. And the story Obits... Fucking tractor. And the story Obits won the 2016 Edgar Award for the best short story. So, is this any good? Yes, it is. Fuck the critics. So some of the notable inclusions in this one include Mile 81 and You Are, which have both previously been released as e-books, and Blockade Billy, which had been previously released as a special standalone limited edition hardback. There are also three previously unpublished works in here. Well, sort of. Two of them, definite. Obits and Mr. Yummy were both new for this collection. Then there's the story Bad Little Kid, which, at least for the English version of it, this is its first appearance. But you'll note I said English version. Now, King actually wrote that story as a gift for his European fans, so it first appeared in German and French and then the English version made its debut in this collection. It's probably also worth noting some of the stories that didn't make this collection, but that had been out by the time this was released. So we have A Face in the Crowd, which he co-wrote with Stuart O'Nan, which is still available as an ebook on Amazon and other places where you get ebooks. And then there's two stories he wrote with his son, Joe Hill. We've got A Throttle and In the Tall Grass, which actually both appear in Joe Hill's collection, Full Throttle, which is in my cupboard, but I can't be bothered to get it out right now. But I do have it. I saw that look you were giving me. See, I fucking have it. Okay, leave me alone now. As is often the way with King's collections, there are attempts at poetry in this book. Two poems in this one, The Bone Church and Tommy. And as is often the way with King's attempts at poetry, I know it's kind of a basic reason, but I really, really like this first edition paperback UK cover. D just always have. Fucking digger. A digger. So with this collection, there is plenty to offer all kinds of King fans. There's horror, there's humour, there's drama, there's suspense, there's even a period piece. It's a really worthwhile collection. Okay, now I'm going to count down my favourite 10 stories from this collection and I'll keep it all spoiler free so you can keep watching all the way to the end. But how about you let me know your favourites from this collection 
in the comments. Why did I say that so weirdly? I don't know. Track 10, Bad Little Kid. This strange little story about a nasty ginger boy made me laugh an awful lot, which is saying something because actually the crux of the story is about a child killer on death row. Go figure. At nine, I've got Morality, which is a bizarre one. This couple decide to take on a weird task from a weird old man for a lot of money. Again, it's kind of funny and kind of odd, but has really stuck with me over the years. At eight, I've gone for Batman and Robin have an altercation. I, I love this story about a relationship between a man and his elderly senile father as they go out for lunch and then get into a bit of trouble on the way back. It's really full of heart and it really captures the awkwardness of father-son relationships, particularly adult relationships. At seven, I've gone for the Dune, which is basically, or the Dune, I don't know. How am I supposed to pronounce that? People seem to take the piss out of British people for calling it Dune. That's what it looks like to me. The Dune, which is basically a Twilight Zone episode that never got made onto TV. The Dune, Dune, lump of sand in question, is this creepy thing that seems to predict the names of people who are gonna die. Yeah, it's good. So at six, you are. So this is a story about a weird pink Kindle from another dimension that allows people reading that Kindle to access all kinds of unpublished works from world famous authors that appear in other realities, but not this one, and also lets you see into the past and into the future. And it also has loads of cool Dark Tower connections. There's a lot to unpack there and you'll have plenty of fun doing so. At five, that bus is another world. Now for something Sh now for something so short, God, this one was unnerving and really got under my skin. I can't really say much for fear of spoilers, but phew. So at four, Mile 81, a story that really does feel like classic 70s King. An abandoned rest area, a creepy car. Yeah, you're in already, aren't you? So at three, Obits, which, yeah, is kind of a little obvious and on the nose at times, but it's still brilliantly done. It's the story of an obituary writer who soon discovers he has a little more power than he might have expected. It's great. At two, Drunken Fireworks, a quite hilarious story about two families on the opposite sides of the lake who compete with each other every year to put on the best 4th of July fireworks display. Every year the ante gets upped and upped and more and more alcohol gets consumed as well. It's very silly and very fun. <laughs> Always wanted to do that. So at one, my favourite in this collection is Under the Weather. Now when you get to the end of this story and you realise what the big reveal is and how it's been staring at you right in the face the whole time, you will be flabbergasted. This is a masterclass in deception in storytelling and it even got me the second time I read it and I knew what was going to happen. So there we go, nine reasons to read The Bazaar of Bad Dreams and then my personal 10 favourite stories from this collection. Let me know your favourites in the comments below. If you enjoyed that video, then there's plenty more for you to explore here. Do click around my channel, see what you find. And if you like what you find, then click subscribe so you won't miss any in the future. Next up, summer is finally coming to an end, which means we've got another seasonal special to jump into.